morning, ma'am. Your attention, please. Okay, my name is Kalo Shvetlitsky, and this is Evgeny Vinny, and we'll be presenting a paper that's titled The Company Convention Management Fund Schedule. Now, uh, we will go through several sections. We will discuss uh, you know, the classical ways of doing synchronization, that's blocking and locking. Um, then we'll explore the motion control mechanism, which is this paper's proposed solution to various problems uh, that we can encounter. And then we will go to the performance of this motion control mechanism, we'll evaluate it, and then we'll give you the fruit. Now, the basic kind of lock that we have is the spin lock. Now, it's very responsive, and as soon as the lock becomes available, you can also, no context switching, that's a very good thing. Um, without context switching, your performance goes up constantly. Now, the problem with these spin locks is that they, well, in effect, waste CPU time. They take up all those cycles that could be spent otherwise. And also, the OS scheduler thinks that the thread is doing useful work because you can't distinguish between warm and spin. The other kind of lock is the block lock. Um, now, that has different benefits and drawbacks. It does free up the CPU when you're just waiting for a lock, so you can schedule some other work in that place. And sometimes it's the only option that we have, like system machines. Now, it's not all rosy, though. Uh, you do require context switches here. There's just no way around it. You have to schedule and then reschedule. That adds overhead to the critical path of the system. And also a problem with blocking locks is that we sometimes encounter convoys, which is slow series of lock handoffs, which really ruins your performance. All right, now, this is a graph which shows the performance of spinning locks and blocking locks. Um, and please take note of this line right here at 64 threads. This machine has 64 cores. So this line, that's full load. This side of the chart is overload conditions when you have more threads than cores. Now, spin locks here in orange perform much better than just blocking, and that's good. But something horrible happens when we reach that critical point of more than 64 threads. The performance just crashes. Um, the other alternative, locking. Uh, for the overload, it doesn't perform quite as well. However, it quickly becomes attractive in overload conditions. So this is a problem that its performance goes down really quickly, and that's the problem that the authors should try to solve. Now, there are other approaches to locking. Uh, there's the Anderson-style key-based lock, which solves some of the problems. Uh, but that still suffers from the bad performance in overload. More threads and cores, performance is really great. There's backup locks, which again solve this problem of racing for three locks. But how exactly do you come up with the proper backup time for your situation, which may also change? And there's spin and block locks, which kind of combine both of the worlds. First, a little bit of spinning, if nothing happens, then you lock. So that's also another potential solution. Um, here's an example of the backup uh, lock. And uh, the aim here is to have 32 threads running at all times. Uh, at first, it doesn't really work out. And then we're usually under this line. And this pattern of spikes also isn't uh, very nice. It's usually under 32 threads. Um, and this chart is a comparison of blocking performance in normal conditions. <coughs> the best kind of block that we have, the Q lock, performs very well. So obviously, we'd like for our lock to perform pretty well. Now, what isn't shown on this chart is performance in overload conditions, which would be somewhere here for all of those locks. Now, 
And there is a solution to this problem, not too far, and the game will tell us about it. Thank you, Carol. So the authors of the paper come up with an idea. What if we would combine the best of two worlds? What if we would use spinning for the quick work handle? And what if we would block the threads in case we um, encounter overload? They named their solution load control lock. Load control locks consist of the two parts. First, we have a dedicated demo thread which controls the overall, overall uh, execution. And for the regular threads, we have uh, just a spin lock. It's uh, MCS or Anderson Q lock variety. So for the regular threads, it seems just like a normal spin lock. But what's interesting is that how this dedicated demo thread works. And it works as follows. This thread calls the OS scheduler in order to detect whether we have overload situation or we underload. And based on this uh, observation, he makes a decision. There is a special buffer, which is called, uh, called sleep slot buffer. And by controlling this buffer, by allocating new elements in it, the demo thread is able to wake up the or put to sleep existing threads, register new threads. This diagram shows how this load control works. Basically, what we have, we have a um, so loop and a sleep uh, buffer. Whether we encounter overload, we make a decision whether to wake threads or to put them to sleep. And what another important parameter is how often do we call the OS scheduler? This might significantly um, change the performance. How does that work? Authors show that their load control scheme performs exceptionally well under uh, overload conditions. So once we increase number of threads greater than number of cores, as you can see, the performance of TPMCS, which is QLock, and uh, P thread lock quickly deteriorates. So, but uh, the performance of load control lock remains steady. When we have underload situation, as you can see, that uh, load control performs on par with uh, TPMCS lock. However, like any good solution, it still has drawbacks. And I can name them as follows. Well, as others uh, admit, this scheme is not suitable when we have huge imbalance in the uh, loads. When some threads uh, like runs faster, when some threads run slower. Which, like in their results, they choose, they pick up race trace application, where basically every thread has the same amount of work to do, pretty much the same. Then there is no nested critical sections. Uh, this is critical for some database applications and um, business applications. And well, I think that their scheme won't work properly if some threads has uh, more importance than others. Like, consider the following situation. If we have, uh, in one application, we have producing threads and consuming threads. And the diamond thread will put all producers to sleep. Then the consumer threads will starvate and won't do any useful work. Anyway, uh, another important um, factor to consider is how often do we call the lock? How often threads need to acquire uh, this critical section? And this graph shows the following situation, that once the delay between lock requests is small, so threads constantly need to get into this critical section, the performance of load control is not that great. But other schemes not perform good either. However, once we increase the time between log requests, well, the situation gets more reasonable. 
even the uh, regular DPMC resort performs quite well. Uh, so others point potential improvements to their scheme. They think that it would be really nice to incorporate uh, elements of control theory, uh, such as Kalman filters and future state prediction. That using this uh, uh, filters and prediction, we were able to come up with a better polling uh, theory, and we'll try to solve the problem of imbalanced load. And then they wanted that they think that it would be really nice if OS support uh, would be better. For example, if their load control would work tightly with scheduler, if, for example, if we, we encounter the situation where we need to preempt the thread, so this load control would be able to choose which thread to preempt. Because what I think that it might be the situation where in highly overload conditions, the demo thread might be preempted, like, or, or put to sleep. So what happens in that situation? Um, however, it must be noted that load control is designed, like it's incorporated best of two worlds. And as we were shown, it performs exceptionally well under high load. And uh, the idea like, behind the whole uh, scheduling decisions are made uh, on top of the execution process. Uh, in previous schemes, all like backup work and other things, the thread itself decided how long to back up or the condition were set ahead. But here we have a dynamic situation. We can uh, adjust the time when to, uh, like how long to back up, when to back up. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? We're welcome to ask.